July 1939, there were 22 comic books on the newsstand with that cover date, including Wonder World Comics number 3, July 1939, from Fox Comics. This key issue is the first appearance of The Flame by Lou Fine. He's the latest superhero to be published. And this is the first issue of the new title, Wonder World. The first two issues, it was called Wonder Comics. This was Victor Fox's first foray into the field of comic book publishing. The title was changed to Wonder World Comics with number three after Fox faced a lawsuit with DC over the character Wonder Man. The on-sale date of this issue was May 28th, 1939. The Flame is featured on the cover in this early superhero cover drawn by Will Eisner. And The Flame appears in a seven-page comic strip written by Will Eisner with art by Lou Fine, featuring the first appearance of The Flame. His alias is Gary Preston. Also, Captain Horace Black Flag is the villain introduced in this story. And this first story would be reprinted in The Flame number two in 1940. Yarko is an eight-page comic story written and drawn by Will Eisner, and it's another early superhero strip, and features the first appearance of the villains Death and the Devil. And this story would be reprinted in Blue Beetle number one in 1940. Shorty Shortcake is a six-page story written and drawn by Jerry Iger. The Children's Crusade Part Two is a two-page text story written by Will Eisner. And Will Eisner wrote and drew K-51 Spies at War, a five-page strip. And this features the villain Lin Sun in the first appearance. And this story would be reprinted in The Flame number 3 in 1940. All-American Comics number 4, July 1939, published by DC Comics. This early issue features a flag cover. Red, white, and blue is the cover drawn by William A. Smith. This adventure cover featuring United States Army and flag. Hop Harrigan appears in a four-page story written and drawn by John L. Blummer. Adventures in the Unknown is a six-page story written by Carl Claudie with art by Stan Ashmeyer in this early science fiction comic strip featuring the characters Ted Dolliver and Alan Kane. Sheldon Mayer writes and draws Scribbly in a four-page strip featuring the Hunkle family. And there is a promotional ad for Movie Comics number 4 out that same month. Large feature comic number four, Dick Tracy, July 1939, published by Dell Comics. This is an oversized comic with 76 pages printed in black and white. The dimensions were eight and a half by 11 and a third. And this uh, was the size for the first nine issues, which were printed with heavy rough stock covers. And this issue is completely dedicated to the detective, Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy appears in 71 pages worth of comic strips written and drawn by Chester Gould, featuring Dick Tracy, Junior Tracy, Pat Patton, The Blank, Stud Bronson, and Lee Ting. And these are reprinted from the Dick Tracy dailies at the Tribune Media Service from 1937 and 1938. Movie Comics number 4, July 1939, published by DC Comics. Captain Fury is featured on the cover, actor Brian Ahern in this adventure cover. Blue Montana Skies is a five-page western strip featuring the singing cowboy Gene Autry and Smiley Burnett. Big Town Czar is a six-page strip which features the first appearance of Ed Sullivan in comic books. Captain Fury is featured in a 13-page story based on the movie featuring Brian Ahern, Victor McLagan, June Lang, John Carradine, Douglas Dumbrill, Virginia Field, and others. Star Reporters is a six-page detective strip featuring the characters Warren Hull, Wallace Clark, Marsha Hunt, and Virginia Howell. Screen Scoops is a one-page story written and drawn by Walter Galley and features another appearance of Ed Sullivan. This is the second mention in this issue. We also get a second appearance of Gene Autry, also Tom Brown, Barton McLean, and John Mac Brown. Streets of New York is a 10-page adventure strip based on the movie featuring Jackie Cooper and Martin Spellman. And Screen Scoops returns, written and drawn by Walter Galley, featuring the movie stars John Carradine, Martin Spellman, Brian Ahern, and June Lang. There is a promotional ad for All American Comics in this issue. 
Comic Pages, Volume 3, Number 4, July 1939, published by Centaur Publications. The on-sale date was June 2nd, 1939. A camper waking up next to a bear is featured on the humorous cover, uh, which is possibly the Great Boudini and is drawn by Max Neal. Lucifer the White Devil is a six-page strip in this issue. In Quest of the Zozosaurus is an interesting seven-page story, which is reprinted from Funny Picture Stories number 7 from 1937. And Errand of Mercy is a six-page strip reprinted from Star Ranger at number 7 from 1937. Funny Pages, Volume 3, Number 5, July 1939, published by Centaur Publications. The on-sale date of this issue is May 26, 1939. A policeman is hiding behind a garbage can shooting at bees on the cover. The superhero, The Arrow, is featured in a six-page strip. And Kino, the Great Magician, is featured in a two-page story drawn by Fred Schwab. Star Comics, Volume 2, Number 6, July 1939, published by Centaur Publications. The on-sale date was June 7th, 1939. A Man and a Monkey on the cover were drawn by artist Martin Filchok. And Diane Dean in Hollywood is a four-page story from artist Tarp Mills. Amazing Mystery Funnies, Volume 2, Number 7, July 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This is the first appearance of the Phantom of the Fair. He plied his trade at the New York World's Fair that was going on at this time. The on-sale date of this issue is June 7, 1939. Gerber rates it an 8, and Overstreet calls it scarce. There's a mile-high pedigree copy of this book. Phantom of the Fair is featured in the cover drawn by Paul Gustafson, and this is an early superhero comic book cover. Uncle Joe Says is the introduction forward page of this issue drawn by Ben Thompson and features the character The Masked Marvel, and this is found on the inside front cover. There is an ad from Centaur for two books titled The Lone Ranger and The Lone Ranger and the Mystery Ranch, as well as two new books, The Lone Ranger and the Gold Robbery and The Lone Ranger and the Texas Renegades. There is an illustrated promo from the publisher for the July 1939 issue of Keen Detective Funnies featuring the new character The Masked Marvel. The Phantom of the Fair appears in an eight-page story written and drawn by Paul Gustafson, an early superhero comic strip, with the first appearance of The Phantom of the Fair, also introducing Akko, who is the villain. The Phantom, mentioned in a book written in Icelandic thousands of years ago, appears on the scene at the World's Fair to stop a crooked contractor who is attempting to fraudulently prevent another contractor from fulfilling his contracts. This story would be reprinted in Amazing Adventure Funnies, number one, in 1940. 2039 AD is a one-page strip drawn by A.S. Van Eerd, and this is another early science fiction comic strip featuring Uncle Oscar and Bill. Air Sub DX is a six-page strip written and drawn by Carl Burgos. This adventure strip features the characters Captain Tim and Professor Gray. Haunted House is a two-page text story written by Rex Lawrence with art possibly by Ben Thompson. This is the first Haunted House story ever told in comic books. Bobby O'Neill is an eight-page story written and drawn by Bill Everett, his crime story featuring the policeman Bobby O'Neill. Keen Detective Funnies, Volume 2, Number 7, July 1939, published by Centaur Publications. This is the first appearance of The Masked Marvel. Reader's Guild advertising flyer glued onto the first page. Ben Thompson did the cover art of The Masked Marvel, and this is an early superhero comic book cover. This issue went on sale May 26, 1939. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book, and also a Billy Wright Pedigree copy of this book. Masked Marvel appears in a 13-page story written and drawn by Ben Thompson, and is a very early superhero strip. Spy Hunters is a six-page story written and drawn by Lachlan Field. The spy story would be reprinted in Phantom Man number two in 1940. Single Series number eight, Peter Pat, July 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. This issue is completely dedicated to the newspaper strip 
Peter Pat, which was distributed by United Features Syndicate, first appearing in 1934 and created by Mo Leff. Crackerjack Funnies, number 13, July 1939, published by Dell Comics. On sale date was May 25th, 1939. The cover features a mouse trap exchange. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book and a Lost Valley Pedigree copy. Red Rider is featured in a four-page story written and drawn by Fred Harmon. Don Winslow appears again in a four-page strip written by Lieutenant. Lieutenant Frank V. Martinek with art by Leon Baroth. And Speed Bolton Air Ace is a four-page strip drawn by Alden McWilliams. Action Comics, number 14, July 1939, published by DC Comics. This issue is from the era before Superman became the permanent cover feature. This is the second and last cover to showcase Zaytara the Magician. The art is by Fred Gardiner on the cover. This is the 14th month in a row there is a Superman appearance in comics. And this is now Superman's 17th appearance ever. The on sale date was May 29th, 1939. This was now the number one best selling comic book on the newsstands each month as Superman was now a sensation. There is a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this book. See, Terra is featured on the cover featuring snakes in ancient Egypt, drawn by Fred Gardiner. Superman meets the Ultra Humanite is the 13 page Superman story, written by Jerry Siegel, with art by Paul Cassidy going under the alias of Joe Schuster. This early superhero Superman story also features Clark Kent, the city inspector Hughes, Leon's, and the villain Ultra Humanite. While investing the collapse of a subway tunnel, Superman first faces off with those in charge of Star Inc., a firm which built the tunnel with substandard materials. Then he encounters the Ultra Humanite, the bald, evil genius bent on world domination whom he thought died in the previous story. The last panel of the story is an illustrated ad for Superman number one on sale as of May 18th, 1939. Pat Morgan returns in a six-page story written by Gardner Fox with art by Fred Gardiner under the alias Gene Baxter in his adventure tale. Clip Carson is in a six-page story written by Bill Finger with art by Bob Kane. The adventure strip features the villain Cheops. Cheops, aided by his robot mummy, is in reality police... Captain Beatty, who is tricking Egyptians into helping hunt and steal antiquities. However, he and his scam are unmasked by Clip Carson, who hands him over for mob justice. Cheops is another name for Khufu, who in DC lore is the Golden Age Hawkman. Tex Thompson is a 10-page story drawn by Bernard Bailey. Chuck Dawson appears in a six-page story drawn by Homer Fleming, and this is the first episode drawn and published in color. And Zaytara, Master Magician, has his 15th appearance ever in comics in a 12-page story written by Gardner Fox with art by Fred Gardiner. Super Comics, number 14, July 1939, published by Dell Comics. The on-sale date was June 8th, 1939. Milking the Cow is the cover feature drawn by Bill Holman. Dick Tracy appears in a four-page story written and drawn by Chester Gould in the classic detective mystery strip. Copyright 1937 from the Chicago Tribune. Terry and the Pirates appears in four pages written and drawn by Milton Caniff in his classic adventure comic strip reprinted from the Terry and the Pirates Sundays at the Chicago Tribune dated January and February 1937. And there is a promotional ad for Crackerjack Funnies in this issue. Comics on Parade, number 16, July 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. This is a boxing-themed sports cover. This issue features some of the best newspaper strip characters of the time, like Tarzan, Captain and the Kids, and Little Abner. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book from the Edgar Church Collection. There is also a United Features file copy in existence. This book was consistently one of the five best-selling comics on the newsstands each month. Ace Comics, number 28, July 1939, published by David McKay Publications. The Cats and Jammer Kids are featured on the cover, drawn by Joe Musial. Jungle Jim reappears in a four-page story, drawn by Alex Raymond. Prince Valiant appears in a four-page strip, drawn by Hal Foster. And The Phantom returns in four pages, written by Lee Falk, with art by Ray Moore in this early Adventure Jungle superhero strip. Detective Comics number 29, July 1939, published by DC Comics. This is the third appearance ever of Batman and his second ever cover, making this one of the 20 most valuable comic books of all time. The on-sale date was May 31st, 1939. There's a Billy Wright pedigree copy of this historic issue. The Batman is featured on the cover, drawn by Bob Kane, and also features Dr. Death in this early superhero cover. 
The Batman meets Dr. Death in a 10-page story written by Gardner Fox with art by Bob Kane. The early superhero story with the third appearance of Batman features Bruce Wayne, John P. Van Smith, the first appearance of Dr. Death, the villain, also Jabba, and Dr. Death's gang. Dr. Death plans to use his new invention of a poisonous pollen extract on any wealthy person who refuses to pay him tribute. This story would later be reprinted in Batman from the 30s to the 70s in 1971. The storyline continues in the next issue. Larry Steele, Private Detective, is a six-page strip drawn by Will Eli. Spy is a six-page strip written by Jerry Siegel with art by Mart Bailey in this adventure strip featuring the characters Bart Regan, Jack Steele, and Rita Mason. The Crimson Avenger is a six-page superhero story written and drawn by Jim Chambers. This character would next appear in Detective number 37. A Game for Two is a two-page text story written by Gardner Fox under the alias Paul Dean in an adventure strip. Speed Saunders Ace Investigator, six pages drawn by Fred Gardiner. And Slam Bradley appears in a 13 page strip from the team of Siegel and Schuster, featuring Slam Bradley and Shorty Morgan. The Funnies, number 33, July 1939, published by Dell Comics. The on sale date of this issue is June 15, 1939. Our boarding house featuring Major Hoople is featured on the cover. John Carter of Mars is a four-page story based on the character from Edgar Rice Burroughs, and John Coleman Burroughs begins as the artist on this strip in this early science fiction popular comic strip. The Crime Busters is four pages drawn by Al McWilliams in his crime story featuring the character John Sedland. The Ghost of Winter Ranch is an early Gene Autry western story running four pages. Dick Tracy appears in a three-page detective tech story. It is getting dark and Ojo scraps on the glass cat are looking for a place to sleep in the four-page The Wonderland of Oz strip drawn by Walt Spouse based on the classic The Wizard of Oz book series. And featuring Philip Lord's Gangbusters is a promotional ad for the popular radio show. Tip Top Comics number 39, July 1939, published by United Features Syndicate. Tarzan is featured on the cover. There is Hal Foster artwork. Little Abner, Captain and the Kids, Ellisenders, and other strips appear. There is a Davis Crippen D copy pedigree copy of this book, as well as a Lost Valley pedigree copy and a Mile High pedigree copy. Adventure Comics number 40, July 1939, published by DC Comics. This is one of the 10 most valuable comic books of all time. A very early major DC superhero debuted in this issue. This is the first written Sandman story, though the character was officially published in New York World's Fair a month and a half earlier. There is a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book, as well as a Billy Wright Pedigree copy. Bert Christman, who later met his death in World War II, was the artist on the Sandman feature, while Craig Flessel drew the cover. The debut of the Sandman and Adventure, this is the first superhero issue of one of DC's earliest and longest-running titles. The on-sale date of this issue is June 10th, 1939. The Sandman cover, drawn by Craig Flessel, features the superhero The Sandman, alias Wesley Dodds. The Tarantula Strikes is the six-page Sandman story written and drawn by Bert Christman. In this early superhero tale featuring the first official story of Wesley Dodds. It also features Vivian Dale and the first appearance of the villain, the Tarantula. The Sandman comes up against a very crafty and dangerous adversary while investigating the kidnapping of a famed actress and subsequent demand for $500,000 ransom. This story would be reprinted next in Justice League of America, number 94, in 1971. The hero, the Sandman, wears an orange business suit in every issue up to number 43. Federal Man is a four-page story written by Jerry Siegel with art from the Schuster Shop. The detective mystery features the villains Mike and Jake. Don Coyote is a two-page story written and drawn by Fred Schwab and has a guest appearance from William Shakespeare. Bulldog Martin is a six-page story written and drawn by Bart Toomey. And Bulldog Martin's next appearance would be in More Fun Comics at number 47. This is the first appearance of the character Bulldog Martin, as well as the villains Palfrey and Hefty. 
Suck O Strong is a six-page story written and drawn by Joseph Sullivan under the alias Copy in an adventure sports tale featuring the first appearance of the boxer Suck O Strong. And Bob Kane writes and draws Rusty and his pals in a four-page adventure story featuring the villain Ichabod Slade who dies in this story. Popular Comics, number 41, July 1939, published by Dell Comics. The on-sale date of this issue is June 1st, 1939. The staff at this time editing was Oscar Lebeck and George T. Delacourt Jr., who is the president, Helen Meyer as vice president, J. Fred Henry also as vice president, and Margarita Delacourt as secretary. Tex Thorne appears in a four-page story, possibly drawn from Al McHale and adapted from the tale from Zane Gray in this Western Frontier strip. The Hurricane Kids is a four-page story written by Albert Hartchie with art by Will Eli and features the characters The Hurricane Kids who are Alan and Dave Burnham and this story also features dinosaurs. Tarzan appears in a three-page story based on the writing of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Gangbusters is a four-page crime story featuring the characters Sheriff Blake and the villains Jack Markey, Jigger Wells, and Lulu Grove. And this story would be reprinted in Four Color Comics number 7 in 1940. Mr. Wong Detective is a four-page story written and drawn by Jim Gary. This detective mystery features Mr. Wong and Countess Olga de Lantrec. This is an adaptation of the Monogram Pictures movie, Mr. Wong Detective, starring Boris Karloff. Ben-Hur is a four-page story drawn by Erwin Hess based on the historical drama. More Fun Comics, number 45, July 1939, published by DC Comics. The on-sale date was May 28, 1939. There's a Mile High Pedigree copy of this book, as well as a Billy Wright Pedigree copy. The cover art is by Craig Flussell, featuring a mountaineer menaced by a bear. Radio Squad appears in six pages from the team of Siegel and Schuster in their detective mystery, featuring the first appearances and deaths of Dirk Stevens and Cal Nichols. Dr. Kilman of Castle Terror Part 3 is the buccaneer five-page story written and drawn by Bernard Bailey, featuring the villain Dr. Kilman. Mickey Mouse Magazine Number 46, Volume 4, Number 10, July 1939, published by Western Publishing. Overstreet lists this as a classic cover featuring the July 4th Drum and Fife flag cover. Mickey Mouse, Goofy, and Donald Duck appear on the cover. This is the last Donald Duck Sunday reprint issue, and it was on sale June 9th, 1939. Famous Funnies, number 60, July 1939, published by Eastern Color. This is the first comic ever to reach a 60th issue. The editor at Eastern Color was Stephen Douglas. After Action Comics, this was the best-selling comic book at the time. The cover art is by Victor Pasmino, featuring Pigtails. Buck Rogers appears in a four-page story written by Phil Nolan, with art by Dick Calkins in this classic early science fiction strip. And Jerry Iger, under the alias Bob Liss, gives us the one-page story, Queenie, which he wrote and drew. <laughs> 